Hey everyone, it's Cindy O'Meary here from Changing Habits. What I want to talk to you about today is food irradiation. I don't know if you know it, but uh, Queensland Agriculture has asked Food Standards Australia and New Zealand if they can irradiate every fruit and every vegetable that is sold in Australia. It's part of big ag. It's, let's face it, it's about profits. It's not about health. While I could give you the science of it, what I'd like to give is my opinion. And what I'd like to do is read you a blog that I wrote. So you don't have to watch me, you can actually listen to me. So you can wander about in your kitchen cooking your food, hopefully without your food irradiated. Um, but here goes my blog. Irradiation of all fruits and vegetables for an Australian, this is my opinion piece. The war on germs has gone unchecked. 2020 has shown that the belief of virus causes disease continues to be perpetuated. Yes, that is one theory. But there is the terrain theory, which says that an opportunistic microbe can only invade a terrain that is suitable for its growth. So we know that with what's happening at the moment, we have chronic um, illnesses, and these are the people that are more susceptible to the SARS-CoV-2 virus, um, corona, as they call it, um, as opposed to the healthy people. And in fact, healthy people seem to be quite resistant to it. A healthy terrain or body is capable of living with billions of microorganisms. The microbiome includes viruses, bacteria, fungi, parasites, and molds without causing disease, but rather living in a symbiotic harmony for the benefits of both. The narrative in 2020 was to wash your hands, put a mask on and stay 1.5 meters from each other. There, are never, there was never a conversation about the importance of sunshine and increasing vitamin D levels, nor did ultra-processed foods get banned. The importance of the breath and uh, health was never met, mentioned, nor movement as an important part of the immune system activation. And lastly, the connection with loved ones was completely dismissed. And now I see the war on microbes passing on all our fruits and vegetables in Australia. The Queensland government has applied to Food Standards Australia and New Zealand to irradiate all fresh fruits and vegetables. On the Fasans website, the following can be seen under food irradiation. Radi irradiation is a technique used to keep food safe. In Australia, it is mostly used to control the spread of pests like fruit fly, but can also be used to kill dangerous bacteria and microorganisms that cause food poisoning like Salmonella, Campylobacter, Listeria and E. coli. It can also be used as a way to prolong shelf life of food by slowing down the ripening process and can stop vegetables from sprouting. That's the scariest of all, and I address that in just a minute. When food is irradiated, it's exposed to ionizing radiation either from gamma rays or high energy electron beam or X-rays. These rays are similar to microwaves and pass through the food just like in a microwave, but don't heat it up to any significant extent. Radiation does not make food radioactive and you can't get sick from eating it. Well, I beg to differ, but this is for SANS and this is what they're saying. It is as safe and as healthy as non-irradiated food. <laughs> we'll discuss that one. Already 25 fruits and vegetables, I don't know if you knew this, but 25 fruits and vegetables plus herbs and spices and herbal infusions, which scares me, are approved for irradiation in Australia. These should be labelled. They include blueberries, raspberries, persimmons, apples, apricots, cherries, nectarines, peach plum, honeydew, rock melon, squash, grapes, strawberries, zucchini, tomatoes, capsicum, breadfruit, um, carambola, custard apple, lychee, logan, mango, mangosteen, papaya and uh, rambutan. If you are not looking out for the irradiation symbol or don't know it, you may not be aware of it. Here is a picture so that you can now recognize it. If the food is not in packaging, the symbol can be near the produce or you may see a sticker. Um, I will make sure that you see this sticker either on this video or um, we'll put a picture under the video. Food poisoning does happen. Many foods are being sanitized or irradiated in order to kill microbes that may cause food poisoning. While sanitation will kill microbes on the outside of the food, so sanitation means that they might use um, like a chlorine bleach on the outside, like um, they might do it on rock melon, they might do it on lettuces. So this is sanitation. While sanitation will kill microbes on the outside of the food, irradiation passes 
through the food, killing all microbes by destroying their DNA. I see food irradiation as continuing a problem rather than getting to the root cause of the issue. Modern family met farming methods use chemicals to destroy pests and weeds. These chemicals and more specifically glyphosate, which I've spoken to you about, not only kill a broad spectrum of weeds, but also kill the natural ecology of the soil, weakening the plants and animals that grow on the soil or in the soil, thus the need for more and more pesticides to protect the plants and the animals. Dr. Don Huber, I was able to interview him a couple of years ago, um, and I interviewed him for two hours, and he had incredible insight into what was happening. So he is a plant pathologist, and he told me when I interviewed him last year that, um, so this is 2021, and I wrote this late 2020, so that was 2019, um, that the way glyphosate works is that it makes the plant vulnerable to the soil's pathological microbes by stopping a biochemical pathway in the plant that helps it use minerals and make aromatic amino acids, folic acid and the iron carrier enterobactin. When this happens, the plant becomes sick and pathological microbes, so the microbes that are normally in the soil anyway, but these pathological microbes invade and kill it. When the plant is healthy, the pathological microbes are kept in check. This is called a healthy terrain and pretty much proves the terrain theory. We can see this with humans as well. Glyphosate kills beneficial microbes, but some varieties of pathological microbes are resistant to glyphosate. So our soil becomes overrun with pathological microbes, just like our microbiome when we use too many antibiotics or eat food sprayed with glyphosate and or eat ultra processed foods. And thus the foods we grow in the soil then become contaminated with listeria, salmonella and other microbes which will cause the food poisoning. So we're in this vicious cycle um, where we've now found another problem with listeria and salmonella and so now they want to radiate all of our foods so that uh, they get rid of that. When I go into my garden to pick my salad greens, herbs, root vegetables, zucchini, cucumber and the like, I know that my food is safe. I support the ecology of this soil using regenerative farming practices. I do not use any chemicals. I know that these are soil-based microbes on my food. And I do, I know there's soil-based microbes on my food because I don't wash it. If there is a little dirt on the food, I will give it a cursory wash. These soil-based microbes that remain on my freshly picked food along with the food are called, uh, in modern terms, probiotics. Um, and they also have the prebiotic, which is the vegetables that I'm consuming. The soil-based microbes not only help me digest my raw gr salad greens and herds, but also continue to keep my microbiome thriving and healthy. Food irradiation, depending on the amount that is used, is measured in grays, otherwise named GY, at levels between 150 gray and 1000 kilo gray. For blueberries and raspberries, for example, that's what they can spray it at. Not, oh, well, irradiate it. Not only kills fruit fly, but also kills bacteria, virus, parasites within and on the food. It doesn't just kill the bad, it is killing the beneficial ones as well. While the main focus of the irradiation of food processes and the science that goes with it is on nutrient values, free radicals and ionizing properties, there is no science that I could see in how when the food is delivered to the human body, how well the nutrients in the irradiated food is absorbed and what will the daily consumption of irradiated fruits and vegetables eventually do to our microbiome and thus the health of humans. These are the questions I have yet that are not answered in the, the literature. Once again, we have a mechanistic view of the procedure rather than looking at the big overall picture. This is how our agricultural practices have been since the Green Revolution, trying to control nature, yet now we are seeing the sixth greatest extinction on planet Earth happening before our very eyes. Bees, insects and birds are suffering, as well as animals and humans, to continue to do what we are doing will continue to give us the same result. That's insanity, isn't it? The soil, animal and human terrain is getting weaker and weaker and thus more and more pathological microbes are invading our space and causing pandemics, mass extinctions of vulnerable invertebrates and decimation of the diversification of plant life. Education is the key to knowing what is happening to our food and deciding what is best for you and your family's health. Wisdom would say, Let's look at the root cause. 
But for some reason, our authorities believe in keeping on killing in order to solve this problem. An irradiation of the fresh fruits and vegetables has been proposed by the Queensland Government. Submissions for public comment have been passed. As soon as I knew about the irradiation proposal, I sent the information to all my nutrition students at the Nutrition Academy to make sure that they submitted for comment. It is not an easy process. And secondly, it's hard to get your head around all the terminology and understand the science of irradiation. So public discourse to Fasans would have been difficult for even the most highly educated on this issue. Like anything, it is enforced without much comment. We must be diligent in where we source our food and who produces our food. Education is the key because if you don't know something, you won't know to be aware of it and blindly consume foods from a grocery store that is either genetically modified, irradiated, ultra processed and or filled with agricultural chemical debris. Many people who read my book Lab to Table have an awakening about the food they are consuming and the health ailments they are experiencing once they wake up and source their food from their local area and farmer's market or begin their own garden. And by the way, we have the incredible edible garden at the Nutrition Academy. I'll make sure you have a link to that. Then they begin to heal themselves and their family. Let's face it, irradiation is big ag. It is being proposed so that food lasts longer, so profits will be higher. And the sad thing is that things will not sprout and seeds within those foods will become unviable. So the potatoes and the sweet potatoes that I purchased to sprout for my vegetable garden will not be accessible to people anymore unless you purchase organic because this does not apply to organic foods. If grains and seeds and whole spices like coriander are irradiated, then I can't sprout them to grow more in my garden, which is what I do. Therefore, the home gardener will become even more of a minority. We have lost 94% of our vegetable seed varieties in the 20th century. When we irradiate our fresh fruits and vegetables that are still around today, our seeds within these foods become unviable. Therefore, we can't save seeds and grow our own foods. So then you throw your food, so when you throw your food scraps into your garden, the miracle of a tomato or a pumpkin plant growing, which I have all the time because I put my compost in there, um, out of your soil just won't happen. Can I suggest you watch the 2017 documentary Seed, The Untold Story? You will have to pay for it, but it is worth it. It will make your heart pump with joy as to the seed savers around the world, but it will also bring you to a stark reality of how much our food is patented and owned by big chemical and agricultural companies like Monsanto and Bayer. They are about profit. They are not about human, animal or soil health. If you are not satisfied with my opinion, and this is an opinion piece, then please go to the notes below to read more on the science behind food irradiation. I've given you viewpoints that are opposing. I could have repeated all of it, but I felt it was more poignant to offer an opinion by using my philosophy of an historical perspective understanding the history and the philosophy of vitalism. I have found that by using these two guiding lights and philosophies throughout my career, it has stood the test of time in creating my health and my family's health. So you will see further reading below um, if you'd like to um, look at what it's all about. Um, but please share this, share this with many Australians. And by the way, this is going to happen worldwide. It is already happening worldwide. We just don't know that it's happening. So make sure you share this video. I'm sorry that I read it, but there's a lot of information in there and I felt that it was easier to read it than to try and ad lib all of that information. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.